Ever been at a party where someone starts going on about kilowatt hours, regenerative braking, or level three charging, and you just smile and nod like you totally understand what they're talking about? Yeah, we've all been there. The world of electric cars has its own weird vocabulary, and if you don't know it, you can feel completely lost. But here's the good news. You're in exactly the right place. Welcome to Cars Satellite, where we make cars simple, fun, and easy to understand. Today, we're breaking down everything about electric cars. What's a kilowatt hour? How does charging actually work? And why is everyone suddenly obsessed with electric vehicles? By the end of this video, you'll know these terms inside and out, so you'll never feel clueless in an electric car conversation again. And trust me, this isn't going to be some boring textbook lesson. We're keeping it fun, simple, and straight to the point. Even if you've never even sat in an electric car, you'll totally get it. So grab your favorite drink, get comfy, and let's dive into the electric revolution. All right, before we get into batteries and charging, let's talk about something way more visible, the types of electric vehicles. Because here's the thing, not all electric vehicles are created equal. And yeah, we all have that one friend who thinks a Prius is fully electric. Here's what you need to know. We've got battery electric vehicles. These run 100% on electricity, no gas tank whatsoever. Think Tesla Model 3 or Nissan Leaf. Then there are plug-in hybrid electric vehicles. These have both a battery and a gas engine, so you can drive electric for short trips but switch to gas for longer ones. Next up, regular hybrid electric vehicles, like the Toyota Prius. These charge themselves while driving. You can't plug them in and they still need gas, but they use way less of it. And then we've got the future stuff, hydrogen fuel cell vehicles. These run on hydrogen instead of batteries, creating only water as exhaust but they're super rare right now. So next time someone calls every electric looking car a Tesla, you'll know the difference. Let's talk about what powers these things, the battery, because unlike gas cars that burn fuel, electric cars store energy, and that's a completely different game. Ever looked at an electric vehicle spec sheet and seen something like 75 kilowatt hour battery, 300 miles of range, 200 kilowatt motor. What does any of that even mean? Well, buckle up, because I'm about to break it down. Let's start with kilowatt hours. This is basically the fuel tank of an electric car. It tells you how much energy the battery can store. Think of it like this. A 50 kilowatt hour battery is like a small tank. A 100 kilowatt hour battery, that's a huge one. The bigger the battery, the farther you can go. Simple, right? But just like with gas cars, size isn't everything. Because here comes efficiency. Some electric vehicles can go way farther on the same battery size, just like some gas cars get better miles per gallon. It all depends on how well the car uses that energy. Now let's talk about range. This is the big one everyone cares about. How far can you drive before you need to recharge? Most modern electric vehicles get anywhere from 200 to 400 miles on a full charge, some even more. But here's the catch. Just like with gas cars, that official range number, yeah, that's under perfect conditions. No heavy acceleration, no blasting the heater or AC, no freezing cold weather. In the real world, your actual range depends on how you drive and the conditions you're in. Cold weather is a battery killer, by the way. Batteries hate the cold. So if you live somewhere with brutal winters, expect your range to drop in the freezing months. But don't worry, it comes back when it warms up. All right, now let's talk about the motor, because this is where things get cool. Electric motors are way simpler than gas engines. A gas engine has hundreds of moving parts, pistons, valves, camshafts, all that stuff. An electric motor, it just spins. That's it. No explosions, no oil changes, just smooth, instant power. And that's why electric vehicles feel so quick. When you step on the gas pedal, well, technically the accelerator pedal, there's no delay, no revving up, just instant torque. Which brings us to kilowatts, the measure of power in an electric vehicle. If horsepower is for gas cars, kilowatts are for electric ones. And here's the conversion. One kilowatt equals about 1.34 horsepower. So if an electric vehicle has a 150 kilowatt motor, that's roughly 200 horsepower. Sounds pretty good, right? And because electric motors deliver all their power instantly, electric vehicles can be shockingly fast. Even a regular family electric vehicle can sometimes outrun a sports car in a straight line. And here's another cool thing, regenerative braking. Ever wonder how electric vehicles squeeze out extra range? This is the secret. When you take your foot off the accelerator, the motor works in reverse, acting like a generator, and puts energy back into the battery. It's like getting free fuel every time you slow down. And that's why electric vehicle brake pads last way longer than gas car brakes, because you're not using them as much. So quick recap, kilowatt hours are your battery size, range is how far you can go, kilowatts are your motor's power, and regenerative braking gives you free energy when you slow down. So next time you see an electric vehicle spec sheet, you'll actually know what you're looking at. 
All right, so now you know what powers an electric vehicle, but here's the big question everyone has. How the heck do you charge this thing? Because let's be honest, the whole charging situation can seem confusing at first. You've got level 1, level 2, level 3, DC fast charging, superchargers, and a bunch of different plugs that all look slightly different. So let's break it down and make it simple. Think of electric vehicle charging like charging your phone. You can plug it into a regular outlet and wait forever, or you can use a fast charger and get juice way quicker. Same deal with electric cars. Let's start with level 1 charging. This is the slowest option. You literally just plug your car into a regular household outlet. Sounds convenient, right? Well it is, but it's painfully slow. We're talking about 3 to 5 miles of range per hour of charging. So if your battery is completely dead, you could be waiting days to fully charge it. Level 1 is really only practical if you drive very short distances, or if you can leave your car plugged in overnight every single night. Then we've got level 2 charging. This is the sweet spot for most electric vehicle owners. It uses a 240 volt outlet, the same kind your dryer uses, and it charges way faster, about 25 to 30 miles of range per hour. Most people install a level 2 charger in their garage and just plug in when they get home. By morning, full battery, and you're good to go. You'll also find level 2 chargers at shopping malls, offices, and public parking lots, so you can top up while you're doing other stuff. But what if you're on a road trip and need to charge fast? That's where level 3 or DC fast charging comes in. This is the big daddy of electric vehicle charging. We're talking 80% charge in about 20 to 40 minutes, depending on your car. Tesla's superchargers are the most famous example, but other networks like Electrify America and EVgo are catching up. DC fast charging is a lifesaver on long trips, but here's the thing, it's not great for your battery to use it all the time. Fast charging generates a lot of heat, and over time that can degrade your battery faster, so save the fast charging for road trips and stick to level 2 for daily use. Now let's talk about plugs, because yeah, there are different types and it can get confusing. In North America, most electric vehicles use a J17072 plug for level 1 and level 2 charging. It's the standard plug you'll see almost everywhere. Tesla used to have their own proprietary plug, but now they're switching to the North American charging standard, which other manufacturers are starting to adopt too. For DC fast charging, most non-Tesla electric vehicles use a combined charging system plug, while Teslas have their own setup at superchargers. But like I said, that's changing, and in some places you might even see Chatamo plugs, mostly on older Nissans. Don't worry though, most charging stations have multiple plug types or adapters, so you won't be stranded. So quick recap, level 1 is slow but works with any outlet, level 2 is the daily charging sweet spot, level 3 is for fast charging on road trips, and there are a few different plug types but adapters exist, and now you actually understand how electric vehicle charging works instead of just hoping for the best. Alright, so we've covered batteries, motors, and charging, but here's what a lot of people wonder, what's it actually like to own and drive an electric car? Because let's be real, it's a totally different experience from a gas car. And some of that is awesome, and some of it, well, takes getting used to. So let's talk about driving experience, costs, and what you need to know before making the switch. First up, the driving feel. Electric cars are smooth, like crazy smooth. There's no engine vibration, no gear shifting, no revving, just silent, effortless acceleration. Press the pedal and you glide forward. It's honestly kind of addictive. And because all the heavy battery weight is down low in the floor, electric vehicles have a super low center of gravity, which means they handle corners way better than you'd expect. Even a big heavy electric SUV can feel surprisingly nimble. And then there's that instant torque we talked about earlier. No turbo lag, no waiting for the engine to wake up, just instant shove you back in your seat acceleration. Even affordable electric vehicles feel quick, and if you've ever driven a performance electric vehicle like a Tesla Model S Plaid or a Lucid Air Sapphire, you know what I mean, those things are straight up rocket ships. But it's not all speed and smoothness, there are some quirks too. One pedal driving is a big one. In most electric vehicles, you can set it so that when you lift off the accelerator, the car slows down hard using regenerative braking. It takes some getting used to, but once you master it, you barely use the brake pedal at all. It's like playing a video game, and honestly, it makes driving in traffic way less annoying. Now let's talk about cost, because this is where things get interesting. Electric cars are generally more expensive up front than gas cars, mostly because batteries are still pricey. But here's the thing, you save a ton on fuel and maintenance. Electricity is way cheaper than gas, even with rising energy prices. Depending on where you live, charging at home can cost you just a few bucks for a full tank equivalent. And maintenance? Electric vehicles need way less of it. No oil changes, no transmission fluid, no spark plugs, no exhaust system. The only regular stuff you really need to worry about is tires, brakes which last forever thanks to regen, and windshield washer fluid. That's it. Over the life of the car you're saving thousands in maintenance costs. Oh, and there are often tax credits and incentives depending on where you live. Some governments offer rebates or tax breaks for buying an electric vehicle, so that upfront cost gap gets smaller real quick. But let's address the elephant in the room, range anxiety. 
This is the fear that you'll run out of juice in the middle of nowhere with no charger in sight. And yeah, it's a real concern, especially if you're new to electric vehicles. But here's the truth. For most people, it's not actually a problem. The average person drives less than 40 miles a day, and most electric vehicles have at least 200 miles of range. So you're covered for daily driving. As long as you charge at home overnight, you'll wake up to a full battery every single morning. It's like your phone, always ready to go. Road trips take a little more planning though. You'll need to map out charging stops along the way. But honestly, with apps like PlugShare or a better route planner, it's not that hard, and charging networks are expanding like crazy, so it's getting easier every year. And here's something people don't talk about enough. Most electric vehicle owners actually prefer not going to gas stations. Imagine never having to make that detour on a cold morning or stand there pumping gas in the rain. You just plug in at home and you're done. So let's recap. Electric vehicles are smooth, quiet, and crazy quick. They cost more up front but save you money on fuel and maintenance. One pedal driving is weird at first but awesome once you get it. And range anxiety is mostly overblown. As long as you can charge at home, you're golden. Alright, so we've talked about how electric vehicles work, what it's like to drive one, and how charging works. But let's get real for a second. Are electric cars actually better for the environment? And what does the future look like? Because there's a lot of hype, a lot of myths, and a lot of straight-up confusion. So let's cut through the noise. First up, the environmental question. Yes, electric cars produce zero emissions while driving. That's a fact. No tailpipe, no pollution, no smog. Simple, right? But here's where people get tripped up. What about the electricity used to charge them? If that electricity comes from coal plants, are electric vehicles really greener? Fair question. And here's the answer. Even when you account for electricity generation, electric vehicles are still cleaner than gas cars over their lifetime. Why? Because power plants are way more efficient than car engines, and the grid is getting cleaner every year with more solar, wind, and renewable energy. So the greener the grid gets, the greener your electric vehicle becomes. It's like an investment that keeps paying off. But what about battery production? Yeah, mining lithium, cobalt, and other materials does have an environmental impact. It's not perfect. But studies show that even after accounting for battery manufacturing, electric vehicles still have a lower overall carbon footprint than gas cars over their lifespan. Plus, battery recycling is improving fast. Companies are figuring out how to reuse and recycle old electric vehicle batteries so they don't just end up in landfills. In fact, old electric vehicle batteries are being repurposed for home energy storage. Pretty cool, right? Now let's talk about the future, because things are moving fast, like really fast. Just a few years ago, electric vehicles were niche, expensive, and hard to find. Now every major car company is going electric. Ford, GM, Mercedes, BMW, even Ferrari, they're all launching electric vehicles, and they're not stopping. Charging infrastructure is exploding. There are hundreds of thousands of public chargers worldwide now, and that number is growing every month. Governments are investing billions into charging networks, so range anxiety is becoming less and less of an issue. Battery technology is improving too. We're talking longer range, faster charging, and cheaper batteries. Solid state batteries are on the horizon, and they could be a total game changer. Imagine charging your car in 5 minutes and getting 500 miles of range. That's not science fiction anymore. It's coming. And then there's vehicle to grid technology, or V2G. This is where your electric vehicle can actually send power back to your home or the grid. Imagine using your car as a backup battery during a power outage, or selling electricity back to the grid during peak hours. Yeah, that's becoming a real thing. So here's the bottom line. Electric cars aren't just a trend. They're the future. Governments are setting deadlines to ban gas car sales, some as early as 2030. Automakers are investing hundreds of billions into electric vehicle development, and charging infrastructure is growing faster than ever. If you're thinking about making the switch, now's actually a great time. So there you have it. You just went from knowing nothing about electric cars to actually understanding how they work, how to charge them, what it's like to own one, and why they're taking over the car world. Now when someone starts talking about kilowatt hours, regenerative braking, or DC fast charging, you won't just nod along, you'll actually know what's up. And hey, if this video helped, smash that like button, and maybe share it with someone who still thinks electric vehicles run on AA batteries. And if you want more car knowledge, tips, and easy breakdowns, make sure to subscribe because we've got plenty more coming your way. Until next time, drive smart, keep learning, and remember, the future of cars is electric, and now you're ready for it.